Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of season 2 of Huffman Racing Radio. I'm your host Landon Huffman and we're about a half a week behind, but we are here actually almost a whole week behind. But we're here present and we've got an episode for you today. So setting to my right, per normal is who's your daddy Seth Brotherton Seth. How we doing? Doing all right. Happy to have you here, man. Oh man, I'm glad. Yeah, just super thrilled. I'm thrilled to be here. There was nothing that I enjoyed more than seeing your face walk through that door this morning. Oh, I bet. Yep. I was here yesterday, too. Are you happy to see my face? Never. <laughs> well, setting to my, or to Seth's right, is a special guest today, which is basically a, a new honorary crew member at Huffman Racing, and uh, he's also our SRI representative, Mr. Blake Harris. Blake, how are we doing? Uh, doing quite spiffy here, bud. Well, happy to have you. This episode is probably a year and a half in the making, finally. Yeah, I've been telling Blake <laughs> he was going to be on the podcast for a hot minute, and we just ain't figured it out. We went to the car store banquet last night, and I won a big award. Woo! Leg lamp. You got a leg lamp. Got a leg lamp. It's for Gile, I Coochie heard. and all out. Oh, oh wow. Special one. Shaved? Yes. Okay. So to say, what, what decade from? This is a new age, now. so if the you old one school. now, it's a penis. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> the new school leg lamps, they're phenomenal. But I did get a big award. I didn't get a leg lamp, unfortunately. I did get a big award. I'm going to talk about that. Those of you that have been voting every day on the car store most popular driver search, grind, whatever you want to call it, voting process. I did not rig the votes. Um, I did win, though. I can honestly say I only voted twice. Yeah, I think I might have voted four times, and one was for Ryan Millington for a pity vote. So, yes, we went to the car store banquet last night. We're going to talk about everything that went down in Mooresville at that venue and then we've got some special announcements to go over some racing announcements uh, i am going to be back in action this weekend uh, for the winter heat at caraway so i'll give you some information on that and we've got some some bigger races coming up also not to rain on your parade but it's going to rain saturday on i race. did see that i did yeah. see that it was is uh potential for rain for like seven days in a row last i looked I'm tired of the cold. Are y'all tired of the cold? That's why I'm heading south this coming weekend. Hopefully it don't rain down there. Where are you going? Golden Nile Speedway. Lucas Oil 8 Mile Dirt Series opener right there outside of Florida. Man. Is that a vacation for you? Yeah, it's usual. Go down there every year. Go to St. Simon's Island right there on the beach. Eat some good Southern Soul barbecue. Any nice establishments down in that area? Uh, Southern Soul Barbecue, that's about it. And the wrong kind of establishment, yeah. Blake. Yeah. We're talking about recreational activity. Uh, not that I've been involved with. I'm down there taking pictures most of the time, but I might. Where do you I take pictures? I don't know that it's appropriate to take pictures. In yes. This no. That is no. not. You will not, get thrown out. No, I can confirm. No. <laughs> you will get thrown out. No, the really establishment quickly. I've ever visited, I'm not sure. Golden Isle Speedway. I have a problem with that. What, what is? Can't take like pictures? If you're, if you're paying money to enjoy something, you should be able to document your time. It's <laughs> about the point. <laughs> well, I don't know that taking pictures, even though you're paying, you're paying to watch. True. You're not. Pay- you're not paying for a service legally. Well, maybe whenever, <laughs> if you was video, and the service would be legal. Yeah, legally, well, you're not <laughs> paying for a service. If you ever open one, we'll sell media passes. Okay, you just got to wear a vest. I yeah, like they got to wear the bright yeah. neon vest. You know, maybe that's a change. Like, hey, you can come in and get your picture made. Yeah, we'll make sure they're not like the Martinsville Speedway vest, though. See, when you're starting businesses, that's the kind of things you got to think about. What can set you apart from the other ones? Yeah, what are they doing wrong, and what can we do right? Of course, there's not one in Claremont, so it would do fine by itself. Yeah, it would probably survive without the opportunity. To I'd take hate to photo. see the people you hire for that establishment if you're based out of Claremont. What if we did like a what if it was a morning establishment like come in get breakfast just wake up with your morning wood just stroll right in yeah i mean <laughs> i've never seen one that serves breakfast no no kind of like a diner like an old school diner but half of it's a strip club mm. not ringing any bells probably not a good idea uh, what is your favorite breakfast food my favorite breakfast food yeah uh, i don't know it depends I'm not a huge breakfast guy, but I mean, my wife, she got some eggs I, from Gut. I like uh, bacon, I guess. Sausage, I mean. Anything normal. comes out of a pig. Sometimes you like a good steak and eggs. I, I mean. So, Gut recently 
birthed some chicken eggs from his chicken hatchery. Yep. I don't know what the proper terms are for it. I don't think any of that was accurate. <laughs> well, Gutman has a chicken coop, <laughs> yeah. and they lay eggs. Yeah, well, some of them were bigger than others, so I will say that. But this morning, uh, Brooke gave me one of the fresh eggs, and it was a big egg. Cracked it open, had some uh, turkey sausage with it, mm. like you turkey apple sausage. crack it into a glass and drink it straight. No, she did a she did a special egg this morning. I don't know what it's called, over easy or something like that. Oh, that's what I had too. Yeah, it was pretty good. I had Italian sausage. Not a breakfast eggs. guy, but not bad. I you don't know, see homegrown hey. chicken hatchery eggs. That's the way to go. Got to have it scrambled though. I don't know why you waste an egg doing it like that though. No, it was pretty good. I it was because the egg was a higher quality. I think the shitty quality eggs you scramble. I feel like scrambled egg is just kind of. Blech. When I try to cook an egg, it ends up scrambled anyway. So. I can't sop up my scrambled egg juice with my toast. No, uh, there was this thing that Dad used to cook for me all the time, and I loved it. What was it called? It was called... Uh, um, Eggs Benedict. Nope, that was not it. It was <laughs> where you took the toast and... Uh, a sandwich. No. You crack the egg <laughs> over the toast. You and cut the circle together. out of the bread, oh, and you put the about. egg down egg in, in the... Egg in a hole. Oh, yeah. Egg in a hole, is that what it's called? That's what we're going to call it. I don't remember what it's called, but it was damn good. He used to make it for me all the time. Man, I'm going to have to ask him what that is. I need to get that back on my daily uh, or weekly breakfast intake. But anyways, thank you guys for uh, clicking on today's episode. I don't know exactly what the overall number is, but... 36. 36? I just counted. 36. Oh, sweet. One away episode from your race car. 36 of Huffin' Racing Radio. But uh, thank you guys for clicking and... Uh, sitting here and listening this far we're gonna go ahead and jump right into episode two of season two the car store banquet was last night in mooresville north carolina and a block a over here he had the privilege of going yes didn't sit at my table but he went well i walked in and you had dylan everybody around so i ended up sitting I had a great table, Rob Blount, Matthew Dillner. You sat at the flow table. Yes, basically. Are you employed by flow? Uh, I was a couple times this past year, so Okay, so that counts. Did yeah. you get fired? <laughs> no, I did not get fired. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's a, that's a good thing. Uh, I had a great time. They had a bar. Uh, the food was great. Food was excellent. Oh. I had uh, that those mashed potatoes. Oh my god. Woo, my. Seth, you'd have been in heaven. Dude. Best mashed potatoes I've ever had in my life, I oh, think. I like some good mashed potatoes. Did you smother gravy on them, too, like I did? Yeah, with right, the, beef uh, tips gravy. Beef tips gravy. Oh, oh wow. I'm not a and the chicken man. was good, too. Uh, yes. Chicken was good. Uh, Everything was good. I Even the little butter balls. Macadamia, macadamia nut cookies, too. Mm. And they had this one honey, like thin granola cookie. It was pretty good, too. But food was great. They mm. had a full bar. Uh, actually, they didn't have a full bar. They only had beer. No and liquor. wine. And wine. Probably in... Uh, a good choice on their part. Mark, mm-hmm. I'll give a shout out to Mark Turner. He was a smart one that brought a flask. He yeah. He was prepared. Yeah, he basically had a moving liquor cabinet in his, <laughs> in his coat. <laughs> I seen multiple people um, going up to the to that bar, the coat bar, and uh, asking for whatever his top shelf was. But I drank, you know, I enjoyed the finer things in life last night, Seth. What was that? What did you drink? I had a Stella Artois. Stella Artois. Yeah. It was nice. It was pretty good, you know, nice and mellow. Just made me feel... What were the beer options? Is that is that, is that a was, high class beer? I have no idea. I, I no just assume by the name. I I, put, it could be the cheapest beer I out there. I think I'd put a Stella up there with a Yingling, almost. I don't think it's the cheapest beer out there. I mean, no. we're talking Milwaukee's best Nothing premium. was cheap there. So, nothing was cheap at the at the banquet. It was like $4 a beer, I think. Oh, it wasn't free? Unfortunately no, not. No, it was yeah. not. Oh, God. No, I did drink a, a Stella Artois, tickled the palate a little bit, you know, smelled it, sniffed it, whatever, the waft. What did it taste like? A beer. It tasted like a... Was it more of a light beer? Or? It was more of a light version of a PBR. Hmm. Hmm. You ever had PBR light? I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> I don't know if they still make it, but they did for a while. Man. I think, I, don't it was think like a, I think it was called PBR Easy, maybe, but it was PBR light. And well, that was some good stuff. not to get ahead of Never myself, but I did drink... Coronas last night. Oh, Ronies. Yeah, they had Ronas and they had the glass Ronas with the, and they was put limes in them. Haven't had a Corona in a while. I have, I was drinking Corona Premier, which is pretty good. But I got to be on that Cerveza kick, you know, at the old local Mexican restaurant. Y'all know how I feel about the Dos Equis with a lime in it. Yeah. Dos Equis Amber. Phenomenal. Greatest, greatest beer you could get at a Mexican restaurant. Um, I'm not going to say the greatest beer of all time because it's not, but. 
in a Mexican setting. Mexican, that guy sounds terrible. <laughs> in a Mexican restaurant setting. <laughs> the the Dos Equis Amber is the way to go. Ole. But I had a Corona last night, about four or five of them, actually. Very good. Squeeze my lime down in there, burn my finger a little bit because I have a cut on it. Mm. Mm. But it was worth it. It was worth squeezing the lime down in there. Uh, but speaking of PBR, I think I've talked about this on the on the show before, but I left the bar or left the banquet, and me and Rob and my wife and my mom went over to Catawba to drink, mm-hmm. and Blake went as well. He, he tagged along, and uh, I drank PBR on draft in Catawba. And a $10 old-fashioned. And I had a $10 old-fashioned. Yeah. I would not. Blade and more. Uh, I was happy with my 325 Coors Light. $10 old fashioned's cheap. We would also take this time to let everybody know Landon failed at dry January. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yep. You know, I, about for that. one, have not had a drop of alcohol uh, since December 31st. Well, sitting right are in front of you, bud. Are you, are you, are you going to drink after January, or are you just going so full sober here? I don't know. Ah, highly doubt. I, don't, I, I, I got a bush light you. down there. Cold yeah. bush light. High rock in front of you. I probably would have bought a bush light at the gas station, but it wasn't 12 yet. Dang. This is Sunday. You can't buy it before 12 on Sunday. Yeah. Wow, I actually forgot about that. Are yeah. you are you one of them that goes by the rule you can't crack one open before 12? Absolutely not. Oh. Blake, do you, you had a beer last night. What did you drink? Uh, At the banquet, uh, somebody offered me a beer, so I got a Michelob, and then I had a Coors Light while I was at yeah. uh Had two two Michelobes at the banquet and one Coors Light while I was at the bar in Catawba. You know what I had in you, a very long time? What? A Natty Light. I don't know if I've ever drank a Natty Light. Never drank a Natty Light? No. I Listen. That was the beer you'd sneak around when you go to high school parties. No, that was Bush Ice. No, it was Natty Lights in Bud Cleveland. Bud Light Platinum. I it was Cle- people Cleveland County. It was Natty Light. Blake, you strike me as a cider guy. No, you just look like cider. you look like a guy that would say, I "Can I drink- please have the the apple crisp cider?" No, <laughs> I am not a cider guy. I will enjoy a nice Mike's hard from time to time, and maybe a twisted tea, but not on the ciders. I could drink a twee. Twee's are pretty good. Yeah, you you look like a cider guy. I don't know why. No, I'm not a cider Something guy. About maybe the way you're wearing your hat. What? I was always crooked because my head's percocked because I've had a couple concussions probably. So, but, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and clarify this. A concussion does not warp your head. If you hit it hard enough. It just rattles your brain, yeah. which explains a lot. Yes. If you warp your head, you've done bad. Every time you say <laughs> something to somebody about an apple beer or apple cider, it makes me think of Brandon at my wedding. My good buddy Brandon used to be a uh, Huff and Racing employee. Yeah. Uh, clearly, he was smarter than we are. He moved on to places that pay. Yeah. But, I think uh, I'm the only paid employee. He, he's, not, but. he's not a, a beer drinker. He would drink some Red's Apple Ale or something. But at my wedding, he turned into a drinker of all sorts. Yeah. See, well, that I'm was because we were feeding him everything. Yeah. See, I'm not much of a beer guy. I'd much rather have like a rum and coke or a liquor drink than beer, though. I, Blake wants I, that juicy juice. That's it's probably because yeah. I'm 23. I'm No beer's an acquired taste. You get older, but I just prefer a good one. Are you yes. calling me old, Blake? I was born in 2000, yes. Are you referring to me as old? I'm not referring to you as old. I'm just saying. That's, that's how it felt. It felt like you were coming from my neck right there. I'm not going to lie. Well, you, you wasn't called the oldest. I will say that I did not start drinking beer like I drink beer now until probably your age. Yeah. I did drink a lot of vodka and a lot of liquor before that. But I have slowly found a very, very beautiful connection with beer. Now I'm starting to go down that road. Yeah. Like, I could have got a liquor drink at the bar last night. Nope, went through 325 Coors Light. The mountains were blue. It was excellent. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. See, I like that. I like that. That, in my opinion, was an honest review of the Coors Light he had. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's putting on a front, do you? I don't think so. No. If you look at my racing career, I was never up front anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of you, Blake. <laughs> uh, so at the car store banquet, another tangent. Really sorry about that. Uh, we're a little out of uh, character and not in tune with this podcasting situation currently. Mm-hmm. RJ's better. not here to run the show. Yeah, RJ's absent. He's not here to, to control everybody. <laughs> RJ's got a terrible kidney stone. Keep him in your prayers. Ooh. Ooh, bad. Did he have to go to the uh, hospital for it? I don't think so. I texted him... Uh, because he yesterday. sometimes he passes them in the house, sometimes he don't. I texted him yesterday because his car was still at work, and uh, he didn't really tell me how he was doing, but he said he had to work a little bit today, so I guess okay. he's doing a little better. Work on getting the kidney stone out, or actually 
working. Working at his employed job. Oh, it, is, it, is, it takes a lot of work to pee one of them kidney stones out. Yeah. Never had one. No, I don't want no. one either, but as much energy drinks as I drink, I'll probably get one of it. I drink a ton of diet sun drops, so I'm surprised I'm not. That's even worse than. Yeah, it is. With the kidney stones. That's even worse than energy drinks. Anyways, back on topic. Cars Tour Banquet last night. Actually, a really good uh, job by everyone uh, with the Cars Tour and the flow guys who put together all the video stuff because each award had a cool little video with it and done a great job uh i guess showcasing the year and all the good battles and all that cool stuff that happened throughout 2023 but i got this award right here and i just want you guys to know if by the way if you're listening to this audio version you can watch on youtube the video version of this and vice versa if you would choose to Listen while you're driving and not watch and potentially crash. Um, I got this award. You can see it right here on the camera. Very nice award. And this is a proven fact that it indeed is better or the first option after a race to celebrate is, in fact, at your local dive bar and not at a Waffle House. This is living proof of that right here. Or actual, I guess, plaque proof that a dive bar is better than your local Waffle House. I just wanted everybody to know that. Uh, but thank you to everyone who voted every day or just once. But thank you, everybody, who voted for uh, myself, for the Cars Tour Most Popular Driver. It's a cool award. I'm uh, I'm humbled to receive it, and uh, hopefully we get it again next year along with the championship trophy. All right, well, uh, I'm, pr- I'm proud of that award. Thank you to everybody that voted. It, it means a lot to me, and uh, that's we won Most Popular Driver at Hickory in 2022, and to get that uh, with the Cars Tour is a is a pretty cool deal. So thank you guys so much for supporting what we do. We got a new driver at Huffman Racing. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Tell us about it. He's from the U.K. Is he going to whip everybody's ass like we did to them in 1776? I don't know that blake but okay. <laughs> from the uk i have a truck driver at work yeah from the uk and we recently installed dash cams for insurance purposes what it, happened? Was, it was pretty funny that one day somebody cut him off and he was calling him a fucking wanker <laughs> wanker <laughs> i thought that was very fitting yeah i wonder if keenan has wanker in his vocabulary I guess oh he's got out. to we'll have to ask him so uh for those of you that don't know we recently announced on social media that we've signed a driver for 15 limited late model races at huffman racing uh, and that is uh, our friend keenan tully so we're excited to have him on board he's going to run a partial schedule at tri-county motor speedway or i guess it's tri-county speedway and hickory motor speedway and uh he has support from a partner of his by the name of blue moth hearing so that's why i got this hat on so shout out to blue moth for uh supporting keenan and his racing efforts and um, i'm excited to work with him moving forward i think we're gonna have a lot of fun hopefully get our limited late model program in victory lane at some point this year so that's exciting seth's got more work on his uh docket no, he doesn't. Yeah. No. Added a few weeks there. No. Nope. <laughs> Is this kid going to drive on the right side of the road? Don't they drive on the wrong side over there? I did ask him, uh, or he's driving, I think he drives like a Suburban or something. He's got a mobile detailing business, or not detail, mobile mechanic business, and he has his own mechanic shop in Mooresville, but What's his car, I can't remember. Come on, man. I'm sorry. I, I just met him last week. Um, But anyways... He told me that it's taken a huge adjustment for him to drive on the left side of the car and not the right because he's so used to driving on the right. And then, a little background on Keenan. He raced uh, British stock cars, is what they're called, over in the UK. And they had a right-hand drive, and they turned right. Hmm. And they do have some uh, series that turn left, which I think he's raced as well, which are more like an open-wheel car. Could you imagine sitting on the right side of the car but turning left? Like imagine just going around Tri County, which you're sitting on the on the, the right. We're driving side. around Darlington or Homestead of all places <laughs> like that. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I know the uh, Australian supercars are right hand drive, and I've done that on I racing a little bit, but that's on a road course, so you still turn and left some yeah. points, but it's still awkward. So we'll uh, we'll have to see how his uh, dialect meshes with the Huffman Racing dialect. 
<laughs> I don't know. Uh, he's he's not difficult to understand, so that's a good thing. Like his his accent is not super strong. Is Rob Robert Huffman spotting for him? I uh, probably Landon Huffman will be spotting for him. But I say when he says his car is driving like a bloody wanker, I'd love to hear Rob's reaction <laughs> to that. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, we'll have some radio uh, recording for Keenan too. Which uh, Landon might. went through this phase where he started using like weird terms to describe what was going on with the car, and I can remember Rob saying, "Landon, that don't tell me nothing." <laughs> what is, was it? Is it loose or tight? Well, what was my? I, I can't recall. If you don't have an example, then it's not a fair well, topic it, it of happened, discussion. But it has a wee bit of understeer right over the bump. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I do remember him bitching. Well, you at me went for through something. this phase for a couple of weeks where you were just using this weird ass terminology. And it was annoying, but I don't know. I don't remember. Doing, I do I, I remember. I don't know what you've been doing that you took away that that you took that away from. But hmm. I do remember him yelling at me for something along those lines, but I just don't quite remember what it was. I don't remember. Um, speaking of announcements, I just announced on social media. Well, I have two announcements actually. You're full of them today. Full of them. Yeah. Full of announcements. Yep. The first one is I kind of already hit on, I think, earlier in this podcast, I believe. But that is Caraway Speedway. Next weekend, I'll be driving for CCI, which is a good partner of ours. They helped us get a brand new front and rear clip put on one of our limited late models. And they have a house car, and they asked me to come drive it down at Caraway for the winter heat. So it'll be a 40 lap limited late model race, which I believe is called Challenger or Charger there. And so I'm looking forward to that, working with those guys. It'll be a lot of fun. Try to go put the old CCI number 15 in victory lane. Start the year off right. Trying to get Seth to go with me. It's going to rain. What are you doing Saturday, Seth? Watching it rain. If it doesn't rain, would you like to come do tires? It would actually be a day where you would honestly have to do hardly nothing. Seth, I have a feeling you'll get get more. But get a picture made in victory lane. I have a feeling you'll be more productive painting fishing oars. You're probably right. And it's a day race, so we're not there very long. Seth, don't worry. I'm on your side on the hunting stuff, by the way, too, half the time. I appreciate that. It is nice for somebody to take my side on things. Zone in here, please. Me and Landon actually had a very, very long conversation the other day. I I thought we had an understanding, but we get on air and he just goes back to his old ways. What? I just asked if you'd like to go on Saturday. It's It's only like a quarter of a day. And you I'll, get to take a you get to take a uh, picture I'll, lane picture. I'll think about a quarter it. of a day is still six hours. Like shut <laughs> up! You're supposed to be helping me here. We'll see. I think I can drag. Seth While we're talking about victory lane photos, I have a bone to pick with you, Blake. What Next time it? we win a race and you come to victory lane, telling everybody to move back, I'm gonna punch your camera. <laughs> yes. in nose. Knock it out of his hand. <laughs> If you were a good photographer, you wouldn't need everyone to move out of the way to get the Well, shot. okay, so here's my the problem. The other 12 photographers are going to get a great photo of me punching you in yes. the eyes. Okay, so here's- well, before Blake talks, I'm going to preface this for everybody. <laughs> so this is what happens. We won a good many races this year. Uh, most of the races, Blake was there. No, a no I was only there for one in the family car and a 30,000. Okay, was, well, was it the family car one or the 30,000? I think this was right after we switched to Deuce. We had worked our ass, yes, oh, the old our ass yes. off for two weeks to switch to this car. Yeah. Because we had been on a dry spell where we, we didn't win. We were struggling. And we finally win, and I'm telling you, I'm freaking ecstatic. Everybody I mean, is. That's probably the most fired up I've ever been. That's probably the highest I've ever seen And we jump. get to victory lane, and this son of a bitch over here, <laughs> move back! Everybody move back! So for oh, those God. of you that don't know, Blake is also a photographer, yes. and he takes photos for me at the racetrack, and we were celebrating, and Blake was telling everybody to get back away from because, the car okay, so. because it's going to get in his shot for the victory lane picture. And that you would want. Well, yes, but also, I would much rather celebrate with my guys for the, yeah. in the moment, and you just take your picture. You just do your job and so not here, worry about So the here's the thing. Around. You back up, well, Blake, damn it. I really do, because here's the thing. You have people that have the wide-angle lenses, but if, like you said, I sell parts for a living. I have one long lens and one camera. Well, like, I don't have to donate three. to Blake to buy a wide-angle lens so he doesn't <laughs> yes. get punched in his nose. That would be very much appreciated. I will happily accept a donation. <laughs> Canon R6 and a 24 to 72.8. So you're blaming, to you're blaming that situation on your lens? No, I'm blaming it on me being a broke ass. Well, that mm. Sounds like your problem, Blake. Yep. Not mine. Yep. 
You better figure it out before the <laughs> yeah. next time we win. That's all I'm saying. Especially if I'm doing all your pictures this year on the car store. Yeah, we better figure it out because if we win and you tell the next person you tell to back up, they are literally going to knock your head off. <laughs> <laughs> Right there in the middle of each other's lane. <laughs> well, the problem was, it was probably the third victory lane, and everybody had jumped in my Imagine shot until then. Broadcast. Huffman's crew's beating the shit out of their photographer <laughs> in victory lane. <laughs> Hopefully that Have happen. a cut like Sean Strickland had on his head last night, just pouring blood everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd look like that guy after that wall hit him earlier this year. Are you going to Caraway? Next week? Yeah. I literally just said 10 minutes ago on this podcast, we're going to Golden Oh, Island. yeah. You're going down to old Golden Island. While you're going to Golden, you have to go to what today, Blake? Um, I okay. you heard this earlier, so you'll get a good kick <laughs> out of this. So, he has heard this. I told Landon this last night. So, I, my beautiful girlfriend, Heather, has got me into going to a gender reveal party tonight. Oh, that's where, where is it at? All right. First off, I already hate gender reveal parties. Just... When it pops out, I'll look between his legs and see what gender it is. But so a problem they had, they decided <laughs> they decided to uh, plan this two weeks ago, and they either couldn't find a room big enough or couldn't find nobody to cater, either cheap enough or quick enough. So oh. they decide to find a room that feeds a lot of people. Yes, the gender reveal party tonight is at the Golden Corral of Gastonia, North Carolina. The most redneck gender reveal party I've ever gonna probably go to. Never, but never heard of a gender reveal at a Golden Corral. So at that I point, t- why would you even have a gender reveal? I don't understand gender reveals anyway. N- no, they that's what I'm saying. Used to not be a thing. So no, no. this is just like a new it's age. It's something that white people conjured up that we're everybody's <laughs> doing now. <laughs> it's some new age millennial bullshit. But yes, we are celebrating uh, the gender of a baby at God's feeding trough tonight. Well, let me know how that goes. I'm glad I'm not attending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm glad I'm not attending. I do have one more announcement, and one. I've already posted this. Well, I've already posted this online, uh, but I will be driving Travis Bird's number 81 for Bird Brothers Racing down at Florence in the Icebreaker. So that is uh, February 10th, Saturday. Hopefully, it'll be my best showing ever at Florence because I've sucked every Won't time I've Won't take much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Travis has got... Really good race cars, and he's been a good family friend of mine for a while, and a competitor of ours, too. We raced mm-hmm. against him for a good bit, so I'm excited to go drive for him down there and uh, hopefully have a good show and get his program started off on the right foot, and you know, hopefully these two races that are not in something that we're working on will at least give us a good, uh, good little bit of momentum and some confidence going into New Smyrna because we leave for Speed Weeks the day after the icebreaker on the 11th. And then we got a whole week of modified racing, baby. What's your expectations? You sat in the car for the first time this past week. My What's expectations are to be competitive. And I think competitive is if there's 30 cars, if I can run in the top half of the field to start with, that's a good good night. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, by this the whole end time, of the, I just felt like your attitude this whole time was you were just going to go out there and wax their ass. No, I mean, I... <laughs> I just, well, I, I know. To be honest, I don't see that. Yes, but I do know that the equipment is the best money can buy. Okay. He does have good equipment. So, that already is setting me apart from any other opportunity I've had up until this past year. I just feel like there's still going to be a little bit of a learning curve. Yes, yeah. it's a race car. Yes, you're a race car driver. And I feel like you'll probably, if you make it to Friday, you'll be running better on Friday than you did Monday. Yes. My thought uh, I is. I mean, right out of the gate, I think you're going to have to. I don't get a ton of practice. A, you're going to have to get used to the grip and driving it in possibly deeper. I ain't got a problem driving some bitch off in the corner. I do that in my late model too much. I think the biggest adjustment is going to be the tire and how much tire you have and how fast the cars respond. But. If there's 30 cars and I run 13th the first night, I'm going to be – I'm not going to be happy with that, but I'm going to be content with that and can can work on it. Now, if I go run freaking 25th, no. That's going to suck ass. <laughs> I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> but I think that we should be good. I mean, I know the PSR guys always have – you know, they always take a good beast down in New Smyrna, and they're working pretty closely with us. And I get to go test it at Caraway coming up, so we just got the seat mounted and all that good stuff. So, you know, I feel like – we're set up to be able to go down there and learn and as long as i can keep all four tires on it and it not get tore up early in the week then 
would be good because there is two longer races mixed in with that there's some 50 lappers or the 40 lappers or whatever they are but then we run a 70 something lap race memorial race and then a 100 lapper yeah. as well so there's some there's some uh longer races mixed in there which i think will give me a good time and everything's one set of tires so it's just like a regular saturday night show you know you bolt a set of stickers on that's what you qualify and race on and then the next night you just do it over pretty sure it's the last year on the old pavement there too because they was yeah, going to repave it for repave. this speed yeah. but so that's going to be uh that's going to be a lot of fun but we're, we're about to get kickstarted we've got our cars tour primary car getting really close to being finished uh the body's on it we're waiting on our motor from john west once we get that thing in there uh, it'll be ready to rock and roll we also sent our motors our huffman racing engines off to Ravon clark so they are at uh clark's automotive now getting a, a retune and a freshen up so we'll have hopefully really good stuff under our huffman racing rides as well for the first time in a while um Really, actually, we've never had a fresh enforcer uh, ever. I'll bring this up. I know it was your mom's birthday Thursday, but I'm glad I showed up because poor gut man having to load both of them in the back of his truck with that cherry picker by himself Thursday yes. would have been a sight. Yes, and <laughs> so we had to buy engine stands. We would have been a lot more efficient with this, but we had to get engine stands because we couldn't take the motors to Ravon without them being on stands yeah. here Rayvon just drop it off in his uh yeah. i get this text at 4 30 i get this text at 4 30 said hey can you run these over to gut he's got to take these motors and i see him down there by himself I thought you took the motors <laughs> gut did oh yeah i was so confused as why you were talking about that but i thought you well, knew that gut did no, i did you had told me you drove three hours i just figured that's where you drove yeah three i hours did to. i drove all over mooresville oh which means he went five miles in Mooresville. Cause it takes about three hours in that yeah, town. I right. had to go to Bell. I had to go to Kane Screen Printing. I had to go to. I was just under the but, impression you took your own motor. But no, he, I guess I he was in Mooresville. Did so not come confused. to SRI Performance to get the engine stands. So I had to bring the engine stands to Gut that's after just, that's work. You are Landon's <laughs> bitch. Nah, <laughs> I'm not that far. Oh, no. <laughs> not yet. I've showed up in the shop more than you have here in 2024. <laughs> turning wrenches, bud. Yeah, yeah. yeah. y'all fight. Landon, y'all Landon fight. what happened to the rule if you wanted to go to the track? If I did that, then Seth nor RJ would be... Well, I take that back. Seth, he has graciously put in his one day so that he does not lose his... That's right. So that he does not lose his racetrack eligibility. That's right. He helped me put a spoiler on the other day, mm-hmm. and we got our ST2 got tires some, figured got out. Some tires. I got them sorted up nice, made into sets in the, in yes. the tire area of the shop. I've uh, done my part. There you go. He's, he's held his small little bit up could he have helped more yes <laughs> but has he been present could i have helped less yes <laughs> so okay so yes that he could have he helped less yes he could have not been here that one day that he was here so you know for that that's right for that we're hanging on you know yeah. still has his eligibility i guess we are to the point in the show where we will review some reviews and uh rj's not here to throw the five star out but Blake is here. Blake, are you a three-star uh, version of RJ? <laughs> if RJ's is five-star, you're a three-star version. <laughs> um, this review, this review is incredible. You're going to love this review, Seth. This is a long one, so it might only be, it might be the only review we do. This is a five-star review from Bass Amateur, and the title is, This Podcast is a Lap Down. Oh, boy. How many stars is it? Listen, it's five stars. Okay. It's five stars. At first, when I first started reading this, I was like, man, this guy's an asshole. But then the more I started reading it, I'm like, I started laughing at it. So then you'll get why he says this. Where do we start? This is a podcast about a regional racer named Landon who is a corporate shill, and all he does is employ alcoholic, has been, <laughs> <laughs> alcoholic, has been, or never will be crew members. It's kind of sad, really. The crew works their butts off on the car every week as Landon just sweeps the, sh- the same three pop rivets and a beer cap around the shop floor for three hours. RJ is the glue that holds it all together as the rest of the crew is drunk all the time and barely gets anything done. Everyone the crew starts fighting 
I think he better say every time the crew starts fighting, RJ has to calm everyone down with his words of wisdom. I really feel bad for RJ. One of the crew guys hates Landon so bad that he actually built his own car so he could go out on the track and crash Landon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they even have had a crewman whose name is Moonhead, which there's also something else there and I can't say. They made this poor guy try to drive a 50-year-old race car and almost killed him. I also feel bad for the 97-year-old dad who they forced to be the spotter. <laughs> <laughs> and because the... <laughs> <laughs> and because the silver spoon driver crashes every girl on the track, the poor old man gets beaten every week. <laughs> Please pray for the old man. It's truly sad. This is the worst racing podcast you'll ever listen to. <laughs> P.S. Landon is scared to race at a real racetrack like Bowman Gray. <laughs> <laughs> That's a five star review right there. Hey, you do? RJ will be back. Five, five stars. stars! Yeah, five, five stars! stars. That's a five star review! So thank you guys so much for tuning in and uh, listening. Remember, if you're watching this, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hopefully, we can get more content out on this page or on the uh, Huff and Racing YouTube channel uh, more frequently. And we're still trying to do the podcast uh, weekly, but obviously right now it's just been a little crazy with racing season not up and going 100%. So we're almost back in a groove. We'll be in a rhythm here in the next little bit. But thank you, Blake, for coming on. Appreciate it, buddy. Seth, you got anything else to add here to the peoples? Nope. How can you never thank me for coming on? Well, this is technically like your <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you're, Maybe a little gratitude with Seth might have to come <laughs> You know, that's a funny thing. It might yeah. actually it, a that. little you catching on. A, a little uh <laughs> gratitude might go a long ways. You know, that's a good idea, Blake. I'll have to think about that. <laughs> Alright, everybody. That's gonna do it for another episode of Huff and Racing Radio. I really appreciate all the support and we will hopefully talk to you guys next week. We're out.